joining me in the studio to be intriguing to get his views on the year, what's proposed in energy is Michael now Lord Spencer, who's a businessman and philanthropist, founder of Next Group. Now, that was formerly ICAP, the biggest, I think it's called interbroker in the country. Lord Spencer also served as treasurer of the Conservative Party and is now obviously a Conservative peer. Good to see you again. We are uh, good to thank you for coming by the Thanks, studios. Um, to quote a mutual friend, with all that behind you, you know how many beans make six, is what David Buick, I think, would describe you, who you and I both know well. Um, what does the country, what does business need to hear later today, Lord Spencer? from Liz Truss as regards energy costs and energy price freezes, as they're called. In fairness, I don't, obviously don't know the details no, of what no. she's going to announce at all. But, but one thing would I would you like say, to hear? Well, I think in, in her uh, debut uh, PMQs yesterday, I would say that she made one of the most pro-business PMQs that I've seen, that I can remember. I mean, to stand up quite clearly several times against the, the introduction of... Um, windfall taxes on the energy industry at a time when obviously the left are uh, are calling out for it vigorously and it polls very well and indeed the energy companies are going to have massive windfall gain for her to stand up so vigorously against it and by the way windfall taxes are not Tory policy they are not pro-business is the most pro-business statement by an incoming prime minister that I've seen for a very long time and I think that is um, a very very encouraging thing to say to hear. My listeners will be shouting at you now via the radio. They'll be shouting, what's the matter with this man? These energy companies are going to make him profit £170 billion over the next two years. These are Treasury figures. Why shouldn't they be digging into their pockets rather than little old ladies in Manchester unable to turn up the heat? Well, they're not suggesting that little old ladies in Manchester... Um, are going to necessarily, you know, we're going to find out today the scale of the, the Liz Trust um, sure, cap on energy, which is going to be, a, I think it's going to be uh, something that's very exciting and very radical. Of course, there's but, going to be a lot that's going to be funded by the Exchequer. But Liz Truss's view, and one that I would share, is that first and foremost, we need to achieve in this country economic growth. Without economic growth, we are scuppered. So we need economic growth, and if we're going to get economic growth, we need an unabashed pro-business, pro-enterprise, pro-investment government and policies attached to it. And in the same way that Boris used the prorogation of Parliament as a statement of his belief in Brexit, she is using this statement on the uh, not adopting windfall tax and reversing the Rishi proposals on national insurance and um, corporation tax as her statement of where she stands. But lastly on this, and we will move on, when Bernard Looney, the boss of BP, probably a man you know well, says words to the effect of, we don't know what to do with the money. Again, my listeners are saying, well, put some of it in and cut the bills, Lord Spencer. Well, it was. It was careless. It was a very careless turn of phrase, but, but absolutely. But it comes back to a, f- a philosophical belief of... Um, of the new Prime Minister, who really does genuinely believe that this country has forgotten about generating economic growth. There's an endless battle of who's, you know, slicing the the shrinking cake um, um, amongst the competing parties. And she absolutely is right to think and focus on how are we going to grow the size of the economy. And she is using um, the the, the fact that she won't support a windfall tax as a sentinel statement about where she stands on business. I'm hoping, incidentally, and I'm sure she will, sit down with the business leaders, and particularly in the energy companies, and say, you know, I have shown you what I'm going to do to support business. What are you guys in return going to do to support the economy uh, of this nation? And, and I what would you like to hear? What would you want well, to hear those men and women say in return? I mean, they should begin to talk about what further investment they're going to be making. Um, hitherto, of course, that's been a difficult issue because our country, sadly, um, has opposed further investment in North Sea oil and gas um, and allowed us to become a material net importer when there might have been no need for that. So further investment in this country is what we need. And not, by the way, just in North Sea oil and gas, but in renewables as well. It was a week ago today, up at Wembley at the final hustings, that I asked Liz Trust, then the candidate, would you say, read my lips, no new taxes? She did say, no new taxes. Is she right? Well, she hasn't proposed any yet, and I, 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 I mean, what we do know How is... How is it to be paid for? Sorry? How is all this to be paid for? Well, economic growth. 
economic growth is her belief that, yes, the economic growth doesn't happen immediately. Yes, there's a time lag. But historically, we've had governments that are obsessed with little man- manipulations and economic growth and investment and, and persuading corporate. I mean, we have left the European Union. We need foreign investment in this country. We need big corporations coming to this company, country. Sorry, And, and, and th- statements like this really do change the dynamic of the UK. We wonder why uh, large corporations don't list in the UK. And th- the, these are the sorts of debates which I think Liz Truss and her government will really begin to change the dynamic on. You eat, sleep, think, drink business. You founded ICAP, which is now next. When you, and I would imagine this is probably one of your Bibles, when you see the headline on the FT, pound slides, market shudder, scale of challenge facing trust. Lord Spencer, how do you react? Do you reach um, early morning, I, I, you reach my early reaction morning brandy? Is that, that's, that's typical FT. I'll be honest with you. The FT um, is not a pro-business paper. It is not a pro-Tory paper. No reason it should be a pro-Tory paper. But you might think it might be a pro-business paper. It is not. Um, In fact, it has always been highly sceptical of of, of the business community. I'm astonished it's still called the Financial Times. And by the way, for what it is worth, they're talking about sterling collapsing. Since 1980. We can't dance away from that, Lord Spencer. It's its weakest level since 1985. It is. But can we just remind ourselves we are in a pretty dire position at the moment. We all know that. But the dire position we're in at the moment is not the cause of government mismanagement in recent years. Tragically, um, the combination of COVID and the Ukraine war have caused a unique um, uh, uh, black swan event, if, if you care to use that phrase, that has had a devastating impact on the UK and indeed most of the world. And so we... we it, well, why are we suffering more? If we were having this conversation in Berlin or in Paris, we probably, our respective countries, would not be faring as badly as it is here in London and the UK. I don't think Europe are doing better than the UK generally. By the way, the euro has fallen, if I might observe. Incidentally, for what little it is worth, I think the dollar is overvalued now. I'm not a pessimist of sterling at this level. I don't see sterling going to parity. Um, um, we'll find out next time if you ever invite me again of course, whether I've been right invite. or wrong. But I, 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 I think I think the arrival of Liz Truss is a new chapter, and I'm really hopeful for what it might mean for the economy of this country. Not everyone shares your hopes. Goldman Sachs last month suggested inflation in the UK could top 22 <clears> percent. <throat> your reaction to that? Horror, as you would expect. Um, Accurate potentially. I don't think so, and I hope not. I mean, sadly, of course, the inflation, uh, the inf- the inflation issue is overwhelmingly dominated by what happens, uh, food supply out of Ukraine and energy issues related to Russia. Regrettably, it's all but impossible to make a forecast on those. And it's clear that Putin has decided to double down um, on a game of poker or who will blink first with Western Europe by um, stopping any further gas coming through Nord Stream. Um, my, I am hopeful that I don't think we can expect Putin to back down anytime soon. So I'm not predicating my views on that. I'm hopeful that we, the, we, the UK West elsewhere are moving sufficiently rapidly to find alternative re- um, sources of these uh, f- um, of, of oil and particularly gas and by the way it's well overdue we looked in the north sea again for obviously. do we get fracking do we go fracking? i think we should do and she has said we're going to do it Re- regrettably this is another of those terrible nimby subjects where loads of people are vastly opposed to fracking who have no idea uh, what it means or not um but you don't think it pollutes the water it causes minor earthquakes you you, you you're not concerned about that? I, I don't represent there is zero risk, but all of these things are a risk-reward issue. And the United States has transformed its energy by fracking. They have become now, from being an oil importer pre-fracking, now to one of the second largest world exporter. It would seem to me a terrible pity if we didn't try and benefit from that. We're talking about Liz Truss. Let me just ask you a couple of questions. How much will business miss Boris Johnson? Not much. What did he achieve? On the business front, I mean, you, obviously, he, he achieved Brexit, um, which was a considerable political achievement, although, obviously, there are uh, divided views on that still now. I think he did, a, uh, obviously, a good job regarding the vaccination programme, which was um, very, very important for the UK. 
um, and arguably he did a very good job uh, leading from the front on Ukraine. Not I, a lot at home, then. Not a lot for businessmen and women in truth, Lord Spence. I, I, I think that's... I, I would agree with that. I mean, he would argue, of course, I was too busy, we had too much going on, I had too many distractions. But the reality is that Boris... Boris had many skills, but being uh, a strategist or a visionary or a or, or, um, or person who had an ideology that uh, wasn't him. Uh, this, you know, our new prime minister has a strategy and an ideology. Many people think it is a bad one. I happen to think it is a good one. And at least it, she has a clear vision. That alone is a serious positive development. William Lord Haig has written that in his, in his belief, she has the biggest or toughest agenda facing her since Winston Churchill at the start of World War II. Would I've read that same arc- article, in the yes. Would you yes, and her? Haig is a brilliant writer, and he's um, um, a, a sad loss that um, he wasn't one of our prime ministers. That's as may be. Um, I think he's wrong on that. I think the circumstance that um, the circumstance that our prime minister is inheriting is a bad one. But the UK at its core is not a, in a bad... It's not in the same situation we were in when Thatcher came in 97. I was going to ask you. Ah, you've anticipated my next question. Uh, Go on. Um, you, know, you don't I, see the, the autumn of strike... Because to pick up on your point, we've all got to put in a shift, OK? We've all got to work damn hard... We're meant not to ask for big pay rises. We certainly can't have too much strike action, right? Well, from post workers to bin men to barristers, they're on strike. Have yes. we got an autumn of discontent akin to Thatcher's? We do, but behind that, if you, I mean, you remember Thatcher uh, as well as I do. I mean, we're of a similar vintage, We've if I may on. dare. I mention... you, you've aged better than I, I have to say. <laughs> there we are. I, I'm not sure I agree, but anyway, um, you will recall at the time the UK, it was like one of those, when the last person leaves, will they please switch out the lights? You know, the economy was in, an, the underlying economy was in a dire condition. We had exchange control, dare we remember that? Yep. Um, and there was a palpable feeling at that time that the UK was all about yesterday. They had no future. There was net emigration. People were not trying to get into the UK. They were rushing to leave to Australia or Canada or the United States from the Middle East. Yeah, yeah. It was a miserable place to be. I remember it really rather well and being a despondent. And Thatcher turns up, abolishes exchange control. You know, half the world panics. Says, How can you do that? Uh, Pound promptly rallies. Um, and of course, she then goes through a whole series of reforms, many of them profoundly unpopular at the time. Um, uh, 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 privatisation amongst them, reducing taxation, and over time changed the entire direction of travel of the United Kingdom. Of course, did many things that made her unpopular, but the economic direction of travel of the UK fundamentally changed in that period when Thatcher was in power. Today, the situation um, that our Prime Minister inherits has got lots of um, big issues, but they're not core I mean, striking is unhelpful, but it's not a core issue. The UK has got its economic self-confidence. We've got great industries, financial services, specialist manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, um, services. We've got very, very much going for us. We have not yet even blithering scratched the surface on uh, the, finding the benefits of Brexit. Boris has done precisely nothing, sadly, in his time about saying, what does Brexit allow us to do that we weren't able to do? Except, of course, for a few trade deals, which are beneficial but that's not the big offer. Last couple of minutes together. There are benefits to be had from Brexit, are there, Lord Spence? Yes, many. Outline some that we need to explore. Well, now. why don't, for example, financial services. Um, there are loads, of, and, and I, you don't want me to bore you with techie, um, uh, of European regulation that have been lumbered on financial services, which should be peeled off. Um, and one of them, which again will, of course, not poll well, is stop, would you take away the cap on bankers' bonuses? I mean, that was all a European project. Obviously, polls well because people... But now... People don't like bankers, let's be candid. But, you know, financial services is our, our, one of our most successful, indeed, I think, our single most expense, successful export business. And if we want to retain the City of London as a leading financial services centre, we should get rid of all that baggage on our backs. We've moved away from the financial crisis. It was more than 10 years Back ago. Back the bonuses is what you're saying. And that's just one example. Right. Um, right at the heart of the City of London is, of course, the Bank of England. There has been criticism that the governors and others at the Bank of England didn't move quickly enough as regards inflation. Do you concur? Yes. What should he or they have done? Well... At the time when inflation started to move upwards at the end of last year, there was a consensus view of central banks around the world that don't worry, this is a short-term blip. 
don't panic, it'll all be okay on the day. And, uh, and they decided, therefore, that they would do nothing to tighten monetary policy in the short run. And with the benefit of hindsight, they should have done it then. And there were many people in the UK arguing in favour of it. And um, in private, I did also. And they were right. They should have taken preemptive action. They were overly cautious. And that has now come back to bite us in the rear end. And the result of which will be that inflation will be higher than it otherwise might have been. What might it get to, Lord Spencer? I don't think it gets... um, It will get, sadly, into double figures. But I don't think... I think 10-ish percent. And by the way, there is every possibility, possibility, that come the spring of next year inflation starts to move back down and, and and the situation begins to look less ugly than it does today. Last couple of questions. What's your level of confidence in Andrew Bailey? Pass. Fair enough. Finally, you have been a considerable donor to the Conservative Party in the past. I understand the donations had stopped. With Liz Truss at the helm, would you revisit that? I've been a loyal Tory party supporter since I was a student, um, um, although I didn't give them money in those days because I didn't have any. <laughs> um, um, but yes, I, I, I think I think she's going to be a, a, a great leader. And by the way, Kwasi Kwarteng, the new Chancellor. Oh yes, I, I must a, ask a, a word about Mr Kwarteng. I have a very high regard for him. I've known him for a long time. Um, he's a very bright guy, a very able guy. And incidentally, I think the lineup that uh, Truss has put in her cabinet is an impressive lineup and one that we should be proud about for many, many reasons. Are you talking about? That? I sense the diversity being one. Of those. I do think it, it it is a relevant issue. I think it. Um, I'm, I'm sure she didn't appoint them for that reason, but that's not the issue. Um, the issue is that this shows to me quite publicly how um, criticisms or suggestion that somehow the UK is an institutionally racist country is complete and utter claptrap. One last question. Try again. Will you be sending them some cash now then? Yes, of course I will. Back on the day. Yeah, but uh, don't phone me today. <laughs> no, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Great having you. Thank you, Michael. Now, Lord Spencer, founder of Next Group, formerly ICAP, the biggest business in the country, in the world, in the world, former treasurer of the Conservative Party. Thanks for your time. And I'll hold you that. Come and see us again soon. Would you do it? Yeah. Grateful.